Hello, everyone. Um, today, I'm going to be taking some time in order to discuss um, some work that uh, I have been involved in prototyping and testing with it in the Princeton University Library uh, regarding um, cloud storage and uh, its integration and support within um, Valkyrie repositories. Sorry. So um, uh, firstly, to introduce myself, um, my name is James Griffin. I'm a digital infrastructure developer in the Princeton University Library. Um, as such, I'm also a member of the, uh, the Samvera community. Um, I have some level of involvement with the core component maintenance working group, as well as the browse everything interest group. Um, I'll be addressing those in a little bit more detail uh, further in the presentation. Um, and I thought that I might also take this time to uh, very briefly define what, uh, what Valkyrie is. Um, I believe that there was already a presentation um, led by my colleague Trey Pendragon addressing um, the uh, Valkyrie project, um, but to basically reduce it to a, um, a number of essential attributes. It's a Ruby software library, a gem, which basically provides for adopters a series of storage mechanisms that can be readily integrated into some Vera repository applications. Um, basically what Valkyrie allows one to do is basically uh, uh, provide a series of plugins through which one can readily store the files or metadata that is being um, managed and saved uh, and persisted within a Sambara repository um, application itself. Um, as it is a Sambara project, it is open source and hence uh, custom adapters and experimentation are quite welcome for this. Um, so, um, basically return focus you know what is it exactly that uh, i'm going to be addressing in this presentation well cloud storage really has a number of different meanings and to really provide a kind of much more narrow context for this i'm going to be speaking to cloud storage really at the level of um, some vero repositories and the actual persistence of of files and uh, metadata within these um, ruby on rails applications um, so uh, for those who are familiar with the Hyrex project, um, essentially uh, up until the introduction and popularization of the Valkyrie um, gem, uh, Fedora Commons, um, a separate but also open source application has been used to serve as the primary persistence uh, solution for saving um, not only binary files, but also metadata associated with these files. And it has been um, this uh, standalone Java application that has been used to write primarily to one's own um, storage solution. So basically, uh, one would use Fedora Commons to sort of save the actual file or collection of files within a Samvera repository. And um, a very common configuration for Fedora Commons is that one would be uh, writing directly to the uh, the file system on the server in which uh, the Fedora Commons uh, Java application happens to be deployed. Um, the interface through which Fedora Commons is actually communicating to um, the Samvera repository is the, the active Fedora gem, which itself is a, um, a Ruby on Rails project, an open source uh, Samvera project and, and component. Um, so typically, um, one finds that, uh, you know, these types of standardized um, persistent strategies are um, employed in the architecture for Subvera solution bundles. Um, Hyrax and Avalon Media System are the two that come to mind. Uh, basically, Hyrax and Avalon um, have readily used Active Fedora along with Fedora Commons to kind of utilize uh, writing to the file system uh, via um, Ruby and this Java application. Um, the introduction of Valkyrie, however, has kind of introduced the possibility of um, exploring different pluggable storage backends. Um, it, I, within the Princeton University Library, um, we happen to have a standalone uh, Sanvera repository, which is not based off of these solution bundles. Um, we have this um, custom Valkyrie-based implementation of a repository known as Figgy. And um, this has been implemented by uh, my colleagues and myself, uh, uh, members of the Digital Repository and Discovery Services team. Um, 
in addition to this, it should also be noted that um, Hyrax uh, 3.0 will begin to support Valkyrie as an option for backend storage, but will also support um, Active Fedora as um, a method of persistence as well to support those who are still um, using Fedora Commons within their application stack. So how does any of the, um, the, the Samvera repository architecture relate to cloud storage? then uh, based upon what we've already discussed. Uh, well, to really narrowly define cloud storage for this presentation, I'm gonna be referencing cloud storage services that are typically used by, um, by users and um, users employing or utilizing a, a JavaScript-based user interface using a browser. So um, really cloud storage uh, solutions here are going to be Google Drive, um, Dropbox, uh, Microsoft OneDrive. Um, there's also going to be some discussion of the usage of Amazon uh, Simple Storage Service S3 buckets or Google Storage buckets, um, but we're not going to be addressing any cloud storage solutions that are low level. So um, outside of the scope of this conversation is uh, uh, Gluster, Ceph, or Swift, which are really uh, solutions for, for private clouds running on solutions like OpenStack. Um, it should also be referenced here that I have um, briefly overviewed Fedora Commons. Fedora itself is not a private cloud. Um, there is, uh, as I mentioned, it by default writes directly to the file system on which it's, uh, it's, it's been deployed in its server environment. Um, there are some configuration options that allow you to persist it to a cloud-based storage solution, but again, that, that's um, not going to be discussed in this presentation. And uh, Valkyrie itself, um, is a series of storage adapters. So it in itself isn't really opinionated as to which um, storage adapter you happen to be using. Um, you know, by default, uh, what we happen to be using in the Princeton University Library for Figgy, we're, we're using uh, the file system um, storage adapter uh, to persist uh, binary files. And we're using a, a separate storage adapter for persisting metadata into a, a relational database. Um, so if we're going to be looking to support basically uh, uh, integrating um, content from Google Drive or Dropbox or OneDrive into a given repository, uh, Fedora is not going to serve as a solution. Um, Valkyrie storage adapters, possibly one could be written that's customized, but we're still left with the problem of basically user interface support. Um, Fedora itself has a web-based client, but um, it primarily offers just web APIs over REST. And um, Valkyrie is a gem, so it's basically just, uh, it, it's Ruby. There's no actual user interface offered at all. Um, so given all of the requirements that we've thus far identified, um, we'd also like this to be something that we could um, use to, well, we would like this to be something that the community itself could uh, repurpose and, and it could be supported outside of our institution. Um, a candidate solution for this was um, a project known as Browse Everything. Uh, this is a community gem. It's been identified as a core component, meaning that there's um, that uh, it requires a certain amount of routine maintenance applied to it in order to ensure that it's uh, regularly maintained and, and documented. Um, it also offers a suite of adapters. Um, it's termed internally as drivers uh, for different cloud storage services. Um, and it also does provide a user interface for uploading um, these files from cloud storage into the repository. Um, so regarding the current status of Browse Everything, this was going to be integrated into Figgy uh, for our usage within the Princeton University Library. Uh, currently, um, this is integrated into Hyrax uh, 2x releases. I know that this is uh, currently stable for working with file system-based uploads. And I have seen it, I know that it works at least in some cases with cloud uh, storage services, um, but there's a lot of work that's done to basically maintain one X releases series of these gem, of, of this gem. Um, there is a 2.0 re-implementation that's underway. Um, the global pandemic uh, introduced some significant delays in the implementation for this. And um, I was heavily uh, involved in the efforts to, to uh, start to re-implement this um, along with other members of the, of the community, uh, most notably uh, Northwestern University, Indiana University, and uh, the University of Cincinnati. Um, for Browse Everything 2.0, um, the re-implementation is using um, React, uh, the JavaScript library, to provide a user interface. 
Um, the Ruby component of the gem is actually being restructured to offer a REST API. And uh, this is documented currently using a project known as Swagger. So if I can just stop the presentation briefly, uh, one can see I'm spinning this up locally. Uh, one has the ability to begin to, to interact using the Swagger um, API, a user interface with um, the endpoints. So um, getting a bit into the architectural overview of what this is going to look like as one proceeds from uh, the 2.0 re-implementation. Um, the hope is that basically one would be in the position where one could select um, any number of different cloud storage service providers and using the Browse Everything uh, REST API, pass this through the entire Sunbower repository stack. And um, in cases where Valkyrie has been integrated, one would then use um, the metadata that's been passed from Google Drive to persist using the metadata adapter to a relational database like PostgreSQL, or one could, or, and, and in this case also for um, the file, the binary content, the files themselves would pass through the same stack, but in this case be delegated to the storage adapter, which would simply write to um, a file storage solution. Uh, so, um, in order to achieve this, there are some outstanding challenges. Um, basically, uh, it's quite rewarding and necessary, but still quite labor intensive uh, to rewrite and re-implement uh, Browse Everything for this 2.0 release. Um, it will, however, allow us to address user interface improvements. Um, and it is also going to require uh, quite a significant amount of maintenance for the um, existing 1x releases um, for the foreseeable future until the, the, uh, a stable path for full deprecation can really be properly explored. Um, as I started to work to really um, take uh, what was essentially a fork of Browse Everything in this re-implementation process and start to see how I can work to um, successfully provide a proof of concept integration with the, the, the Princeton Figgy repository, um, I found that there were really some architectural challenges or I would say more open-ended questions um, and some real um, amb ambiguity or level degrees of ambiguity that could be found when it came, comes to um, uh, addressing um, supporting a, a more generic uh, project that could be readily repurposed uh, between different um, institutions and some uh, member organizations. Um, so it's, it's quite simple to identify use cases for Google Drive or Dropbox. I mean, uh, end users are going to want to basically have um, an an additional user interface on their uh, Sunbearer repository that allows them to click and select, say, a number of files on Google Drive or um, select an entire folder and simply um, have this ingested into a given collection. Um, however, when it comes to actually um, implementing this at the, the, the software level, um, how this can be reconciled with the, new, the newer uh, Valkyrie architecture, it, it becomes a bit less obvious. Um, as I was exploring the re-implementation and seeing how it could be integrated with Figgy, um, some questions that I really that really became apparent to me were um, whether or not Browse Everything is actually something that should be supported as a standalone gem, um, or is this something that might actually be more appropriate to support as a, a single Valkyrie adapter? Perhaps there could be multiple Valkyrie adapters for different cloud storage services, say a Google Drive adapter or a Dropbox adapter. Um, and another um, challenge or, or question that really arose was um, one of, of discussing really persistence. I felt that um, as I was looking to uh, explore how we could support the, um, the REST API that had been um, started to be implemented, um, it was clear that Browse Everything was really only designed for supporting um, uploads, or I should say more accurately, transfers from cloud storage services into one's repository. Um, when it comes to persistence, this seems to have been something that um, that was an oversight and error uh, in, in the designs that I proposed to others who collaborated on this project. And I think that it might be worth exploring how maybe persistence could be supported um, using this emerging solution, or at least um, narrowly defining the scope of this project and providing a, a strategy for supporting persistence, um, such that you know, no one feels as if they're, they're trapped in a situation where they would like to not only read from, say, Google Drive, but also write to Google Drive. 
um, under certain circumstances. Um, now, a lot of the work that was undertaken really took place um, much earlier this year, um, between January and March, to try and um, integrate these um, new Browse Everything to, uh, to release with Figgy. Um, there's basically been a heavy amount of early integration with the Google Picker API. Um, this is really a JavaScript driven approach to supporting Google Drive uploads. And um, under these circumstances, it became apparent that while the, the REST API was an excellent proof of concept, I don't know how useful it happens to have been for, um, you know, uh, at least the Google Drive use cases. So I'm going to, I, I can, oh, sorry, bring up. An example. So here we have um, a test install uh, deployment of our Figgy um, uh, Valkyrie implementation or Valkyrie repository implementation. Apologies. Oh, I'm going to to my account. So all of this interface is basically something that was um, a bit of a bottleneck for the actual process of working with. Uh, with Google Drive, it, it becomes apparent if one starts to work with um, supporting uh, user interface development that Google is really quite opinionated in terms of, of trying to drive one towards using their own uh, JavaScript um, user interface library. In this case, they're, what they refer to as their Picker API. Um, however, it does seem to have, it's, it's in, uh, implemented in plain JavaScript, so it's not specific to any framework. It can be readily integrated with React or any other framework that one might choose. And let's let this moment. While the um, derivatives are being generated, uh, I will state that one of the additional problems of working with the Google Picker API has been that it happens to have been a bit of a, um, it, it, it has some difficulty working within browsers, which happens to have the, have ad blockers or enabled or, or something along these lines. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, this was working earlier. I'll try it maybe once more. All right, apologies. In the name of time, I'll just go forward and see if I can return to this. So from uh, working with this uh, Valkyrie implementation, uh, repository implementation, I found that really a JavaScript driven approach might be the preferred approach for, for working with supporting um, additional cloud storage services such as Dropbox. Um, Amazon Web Services for, for S3 buckets also offers a, a software development kit or SDK. Um, uh, OneDrive also offers this and it, and it feels more and more uh, as if um, basically taking a very heavy uh, JavaScript driven approach with um, maybe the ability to, to rely upon the rest, uh, you know, a, a, a simple generic REST client for more customized drivers might make a bit more sense um, when it comes to uh, supporting uh, of the other necessary drivers for a 2.0 release. Um, so I did want to offer some time for, for questions and answers. Um, I know that I, I condensed a bit of the material here. Um, if there's any specific topics or anything uh, that, that uh, wasn't quite clear during this presentation, I'd be happy to discuss anything in relation to the, the Browse Everything 2.0 release or um, supporting the current 1.0 releases for Hyrax. Thank you, James. Um, it was a great presentation. Um, there is uh, no question under Q&A, but uh, since the panelists cannot post question under Q&A, I do see in chat there are a few questions. Uh, one from Baha Bahavana. Uh, can the blue imp uploader be extended? Is the uploader a pluggable part in Hyrex? It, it is. Um, so the actual uploader itself is a separate project. 
uh, I can share this within um, the Slack and chat as well. But if one looks within la the um, labs organization, there's actually a project here, Browse Everything Redux React. And um, this is what supports the, um, the user interface. And the hope is that basically we'll be in the position uh, with the 2.0 release to make this extensible. As one can see, it's, it, it's in a very, very early state of development. Um, but yes, this is based off of uh, the Create React app um, uh, solution. There was also some work that went into trying to restructure some of that into web components for those who might be um, interested or curious. But yes, it's definitely extensible and decoupled. Okay, thank you. Um, there is another question from her about Browse Everything. How does Browse Everything account for large file uploads from a drive through the browser? So this is uh, an excellent question, and this is primarily what created a number of obstacles for me when trying to support Google Drive. In the past, um, and this includes for the 1.0 release, um, Google Drive basically has a pagination mechanism which requires one to, re to request pa um, pages of, of entire file um, listings or file metadata from a given drive. Um, so how one does this efficiently is that Google actually supports batch requests and um, chunking for, for, for larger file, um, file downloads. Um, I found that because I'm using this um, Google Picker API it's, that's maintained by Google itself, it seems to be the case that this if you use the Google Picker API um, as, jo there, you know, as a JavaScript library alone, it seems to handle the uploads um, of large files pretty much on its own. Um, you just need to provide a callback um, and pro provide it with um, some additional options. Um, that being stated, I haven't tested this for anything beyond, I want to say maybe, eight gigabytes, and that might be too high. So if anything larger than this, um, I would need to, to test this um, in order to confirm that this wouldn't break even just using Google standalone picker JavaScript library. And if it would be helpful, I can also offer my time um, in order to meet with you and, and, and try to test this. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, next question is from Alberto Martinez. Have you thought of using SharePoint as well? Um, I have not. Thank you very much for that, um, that suggestion. Currently, we're, I, I need to basically return to implementing support for the other um, core drivers to ensure parity with the 1.0 releases. So following the support for um, Dropbox, Amazon S3, and, um, and OneDrive, um, SharePoint would definitely be something I'd be interested in exploring. Um, Again, I think the limitation there would be uh, based upon what they have to happen to offer for an API uh, for a JavaScript library. But mm -hmm. I'd be I, I'd like to if I could. Okay. Um, next one is from Jonathan Rochkin. Are there any plans for supporting Rails six on Browse Everything one point x? Um, yes. Yeah, so I've been working with Rails six in order to try and get the um, the uploads functioning with Figgy, and because because this is something that requires Rails six basically provides you technically, I, at least it was the case at the time um, with the option for using Sprockets or Webpack for managing JavaScript assets that. Um, presented some difficulties in, in terms of working with engine cart and um, testing uh, for those who are familiar with that solution. Um, but basically, uh, it, it will work with Rails 6 and Webpack. I don't know if it will work with Sprockets, um, given that I've just had no opportunity to, to really test that and see if it, it actually breaks at this point in time. Uh, but with Webpack and Rails 6 releases, I definitely can confidently say it does work. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. The next question is from Thomas. I like the idea of Browse Everything as a possible broker of Valkyrie persistence adapters. 
Can we have a browse everything sprint again this year? Yes. Yes, thank you very much uh, uh, for that question. Um, I, I have been very interested in really returning to actively um, trying to push forward and, and kind of produce a, a Browse Everything release this year. And uh, I am sincerely sorry for um, the delays involved in, in sort of returning to a lot of this work, but I, I too, truly hope to have the opportunity to return to, uh, to collaborating with Thomas and others who invested so much of their time and, and really are responsible for carrying this work forward. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, one last question from Bhavna. Does this Google picker replace the Redux, AKA Hyrex current uploader? No, uh, it would have to. And that's, therein lies the problem. It, it's, if, if you use the picker, you're basically going to be, if, if you don't want to use a um, browse, if, you, if until we had browse everything finished, you would have to hack in a Google Picker library to your custom Hyrax implementation. So unfortunately, it's not something you could just swap in easily. It's it's something that you would have to hard code very, very, uh, and customize to your insta uh, installation. Okay, sounds good. I don't see any more questions here. Uh, we have a few minutes before the interest group and working group updates. If anyone has any questions, you can post in Q&A section. Is there anything else, James, you can think of you want to talk about? No, no. I just wanted to thank you, everyone, for your attention. And uh, I look forward to uh, returning to this work. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your presentation. And thank you for answering all the questions. These were like great questions.